Good evening, friends. Seven o'clock, Wednesday night. Wednesday night of Holy Week. Such a beautiful day, and I hope you had a chance to go outside. I did some yard work today and went a long, long walk, and I must say it was just beautiful. I invite you now to center yourself, and I'm going to light the peace candle. The same candle I always light when I'm with, together with you on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7. We continue our reading through Holy Week. And before we start reading from the Bible, I invite you to pray. Please join me. Christ God, giver of the most expensive gift of all, help us to learn from you. May we who are so adept of catering for your own wants, make ourselves more vulnerable to the needs of others. Let us live unselfishly and more sensibly, that we may spread love's fragrance wherever the odor Cynicism and despair hangs in the air. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The reading today continues in Matthew's in Mark's Gospel. I'm sorry, Mark's Gospel. So if you would like to read with me, we start in Mark 14, the first nine verses. Mark 14. It was now two days before the feast of the Passover and unleavened bread. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking a crafty way to arrest Jesus and put him to death. For they said, not during the festival or there might be trouble amongst the people. Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. He was at dinner when a woman entered carrying a precious jar of expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfumed oil on Jesus' head. Then some of them become angry and said, what a useless waste of perfume. It could have been sold for more than 300 silver coins and the money given to the poor. And they criticized her. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Why are you troubling her? What she has just done for me is a very charitable work. At any time, you can help the poor, for you always have them with you, but will not have me forever. This woman has done what was hers to do. She has anointed my body beforehand for my burial. Truly, I say to you, wherever the good news is proclaimed all over the world, what she has done will be told in praise of her. Here ends tonight's reading. Praise to be God. I wonder, has anybody ever done something good to you? I'm not just talking about any Christmas gifts, but really poured out love. Not talking about expensive rings, for any engagement or weddings, but has ever done something where you felt embarrassed or ashamed of accepting. I know for myself, when I lived in Africa, it was a very, very pure, poor, poor community. And I know whenever we as white people from the Methodist church came, the village was so excited. And they, after the service, had the best, best meal for us. They slaughtered a goat or the only chickens they had. And we were the first people to eat. I felt embarrassed because I knew that what I'm eating right now with one meal, they could have hold ate on it for the whole week. But I was the receiver. I fell off saying, you shouldn't have. No, please, please, please don't. 
No, but that would have been an insult. And so I did what I was asked to do. I ate. This woman here in our story, she did out of love. And what did the disciples say? Ah, oh, you shouldn't have. That money could have been used for anything else. It was expensive. What could be all done with that money? Yeah, good argument. You could have used that money in many, many different ways. How do you feel when somebody does something for you out of love? I know how I feel. I feel like bad, kind of embarrassed, kind of like, oh, you shouldn't have. I can't really take it. But that's not the point. Sometimes people do something out of love because they just want you to have it. And I know we were raised, or I was raised, it is much better to receive than to give. But sometimes, you know, sometimes it's better to give than to receive. But sometimes it is so hard to receive. And if somebody wants to do something good to you, please let it happen to you. Please let other people give the opportunity of sharing their love. Just like the woman did in our story. She wanted to share her love to Christ. And if we say, oh, you don't have to, we are actually taking the opportunity away from others who want to show their love to us. Jesus was always doing great things for other people. Here, he has the chance to receive. To receive the love of one woman. He allowed her to be the giver. And therefore, she was able to feel the joy of doing something special for someone else. So I invite you, be like this woman. Give generously whenever you feel like it. And also, be like Christ. Just receive it. All what you need to do is say, thank you without feeling bad about you. Because I know for myself, I have experienced, I should have, I should have. I should have done something nice for that person, but for whatever reason, I didn't. And later I regret the missed opportunity when our friends or families are gone. Jesus reminds us that it is important to take time to show our love to others, to give as well as to receive. Because sometimes there is no tomorrow. And I hope that you will never regret that time, but always are there in the moment when you feel that you can love and also maybe even more important that you can receive love and just say thank you. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, thank you. Thank you for your love and that we can give and receive. Help us remember to show love to those around us as they may not be here tomorrow. Remind us to allow others to do things for us so that they feel the, feel the joy of giving as well. In your name we pray. Amen. And I'm so glad to see Melanie and Christy. Thank you for being here and thank you for your comments. And it would be so good in the future, in the near future, to see you both live. And But for right now, all what we have is online. Join us tomorrow night. It's Monday, Thursday, 7 o'clock for our Monday, Thursday um, service at the church. And I wish you all a good night.